All right, here we are in a walkthrough of our next uh, homework sentence. Here we have the couplet, which is in, in Murgatroyd's numbering 25 and 26 of Ovid's um, Ars Amatoria, Ovid with Love. In, in the Ovid text as a whole, this is 41 and 42. Uh, remember, Murgatroyd is making a selection and leaving out uh, some material. Now the uh, couplet runs, Dom licet et loris passim potes irresolutis, elga qui dicas tu mi sola plaques. Um, well, let's first look at morphology. Let's start with dom. Dom is a conjunction, while, then licet is the verb, uh, impersonal verb, essentially. It'll, uh, its lemma is licet, in other words generally occurs in the third person only. It's a present indicative active third singular. Et is the conjunction. Loris is a form of lorum, a, a rain for, a, for an animal, a horse, and so forth. Uh, it is a noun in the plural, neuter, ablative. Possum, adverb. Potes, a form of possum, not poto. A verb in the second singular, present indicative active. Ire. Uh, is a form of go, eo, uh, in present infinitive active. Solutis is the perfect passive participle of solvo, to release, to loosen. Uh, it is neuter ablative, plural. Then we move along. Elege uh, is a form of elego, uh, the second singular imperative. Qui is the pronoun, um, and it's singular feminine dative. Remember, uh, here, uh, Ovid is, is trying to find a girlfriend, and so we know from context that this qui, which has no antecedent, as we'll discuss, uh, is feminine. Uh, dikas is the present subjunctive active, and therefore, it must be a form of dico two, even though we don't have a dictionary to figure out what one and two mean. Here we can tell, because it's a subjunctive, uh, I happen to know, uh, is what we have here, that dico two is the, uh, the uh, form that means to say or to speak. Uh, and I believe the subjunctive, how do I know that? Oh, how would you know that? I believe it was pointed out in the notes. Then again, tu is a pronoun, singular feminine nominative, for various reasons. But, of course, Ovid is again seeking a, a feminine companionship. Uh, mihi refers to the speaker, and therefore is masculine, singular dative. Sola is an adjective, feminine, singular nominative. Uh, and here we better change it because it's marked ablative, so let's change that to nominative. Uh, Save our changes. Plaques is a form of plaqueo, uh, to be pleased. Uh, it's it's the commonly used in in Ovid to mean to to uh, like uh, a girl, to be interested romantically in someone. Uh, and there we go. We have uh, marked down the correct morphology for all the words here. Now let's turn. To go through the syntax. Dum, uh, as we have dis uh, discussed, is <clears throat> a, s a conjunction. What kind of conjunction? It's a subordinating conjunction and it introduces a, a subordinate clause uh, while it is permitted and while you are able to progress, to go uh, hither and yon, passim, with reins loosened or with loosened reins, perhaps. Uh, either one might be correct. With loosened reins is how I've annotated. So, uh, dum uh, introduces a temporal clause, as you'll see, which gives the circumstances under which elege takes place. Therefore, dum is suspended, is dependent on elege. And then uh, you can see that we have uh, a bifurcation Sign signified by et. Uh, 
you'll recall that et is a coordinating conjunction, and this means that we should have two like structures. We should have uh, two, two or more examples of the same structure, one occurring to the left of et and one to the right. Well, there's only one structure to the left, so it's easy. It's the verb of the dum clause, while it is permitted. So uh, we're looking for another verb of the dum clause, the temporal clause, and the, we expect it to be indicative, and that is potes. So we split uh, this dum clause into while it is permitted and while you are able. Then, of course, after a verb like to be able, to complete the meaning, we need a, a, another clause, generally speaking, and that is an infinitive of the complement type, a, a complementary infinitive, ire, while it is permitted to go, uh, to go uh, ire, and to go hither and yon, here and there, to wander, while you are free, while you're not yet in a binding relationship. The image is of a uh, charioteer driving his his team of horses and the image is applied to romance and relationships so uh, you get the picture no doubt uh, and uh, uh, lori salutis with loosened reins just means you're giving the horses their head you're letting them uh, wander a bit so while you still have a wandering eye while you're while you're not yet in a relationship while you're free uh, from entanglements uh, is what this clause uh, says, the DOOM clause. All right, as you can see, uh, dependent on IRE, the complementary clause, complementary infinitive, we find uh, LORIS uh, in the ablative, and here, ablative of manner, I suppose. Uh, it describes how uh, the going takes place takes place quickly, slowly, hmm, okay, In, uh, analog to those, it takes place uh, with loosened rain. And possum uh, <coughs> is an adverb uh, which indicates more or less the same kind of thing. And, all right, now the sentence gets a slightly higher, harder. We have elige, the main verb, that's easy, choose, and then we have what? We have a verb as a direct object. How can that be? Well, this verb is in what would be a relative clause, uh, but it has no antecedent. What do I mean by that? The clause is introduced by qui, which is feminine, singular, uh, and um, dative. Well, we don't find a feminine singular in the higher clause. Antecedent has to be in some clause higher up in the dependency structure. Well, we don't find such a thing. Uh, Alia is the only word in its clause, as it were. So what are we going to do? What's the rule when there's no antecedent for a relative? Well, remember, uh, a relative is, a clause is functionally an adjective. It functions like an adjective. Uh, the green book, the book which is on the table, uh, both the relative clause and the adjective specify the book. So you can see that the parallelism is there between uh, these kind of clauses and adjectives. So what happens when you have an adjective uh, without a noun for it to specify? Well, remember, the adjective functions as a noun. It takes on its uh, the function of the noun it should modify, as well as, as re retaining its own function, its, its own semantic field. Uh, same thing happens here. Because there is no antecedent to the relative, uh, the relative uh, takes the place. Uh, the clause is promoted into the place. And here it would be direct object. Choose a woman uh, to whom you might say would be uh, how the sentence might go if the, if the uh, word were specified, if the direct object were specified, if the antecedent were made explicit. So we promote dikas. So choose to whom you might say, and then we have, uh, as another direct object, you alone are pleasing to me. You're the only one I like, uh, more or less. You're the only one I'm attracted to. Um, here, 
uh, th this we haven't discussed much because this is a direct quotation. It functionally acts as a word, as a noun. It, the quotation marks, as it were, make it into just a a a, a noun. I guess I, I can't think of a better way of saying it. For example, uh, you could put quotation marks around something like "A fool and his money are soon parted," and that could be the subject of a sentence. "A fool and his money." are soon parted, is an old saying. There, the whole thing is the subject of is, uh, or Ben Franklin liked to say, a fool and his money is soon parted. Uh, well, it's the direct object of what he liked to say. Uh, ben Franklin liked to say uh, witty sayings. You see that a direct object would normally follow there, but here we have a direct uh, we have a direct object that's made up of a quotation, a direct quotation. So uh, we haven't discussed these, but that's what's going on here functionally. Within the quotation, uh, tu mihi sola plaques, tu is the subject, uh, mihi a, a reference or indirect object would be fine for the dative, you are pleasing to me. What about sola? Sola is the tricky one because it doesn't uh, specify who it is. We say adjectives generally when they're attributive, give us information to make an identification. That's not completely the only way they can be interpreted, but that's a, a, a usual rule of thumb. Uh, but here, um, we have this other use, the don't go away mad construction, as I call it, where um, Sola is uh, giving us more information about the nature of the, the verb that she is uh, the addressee is uniquely pleasing to Ovid. So we call that a compliment phrase and that's one of the trickiest things in Latin and, and it's difficult for for people to grasp and it isn't necessarily well understood. All right uh, that's all there is to say on uh, this particular couplet I hope and uh, please be ready to bring questions to class.